This video lesson is on judicial philosophy. What is judicial activism? Philosophy that the courts should take an active role in solving social, economic, and political problems. Courts should uphold the guardian ethic. They act as a guardian of the people. Examples of judicial activism include the following court cases. Establishing the one-man, one-vote principle to reapportionment in Baker v. Carr in 1962. Requiring states to provide legal aid for the poor. Gideon v. Wainwright, 1963. Striking down death penalty laws as violating Amendment 8. Furman v. Georgia, 1972. Striking down a Texas law that banned flag burning. Texas v. Johnson, 1989. Striking down the Gun-Free School Zones Act in United States v. Lopez, 1995. Striking down state death penalties for the mentally challenged. Atkins v. Virginia, 2002. Striking down a Texas sodomy law in Lawrence v. Texas, 2003. Striking down campaign contribution limits for corporations and unions in Citizens United v. the Federal Election Commission, 2010. Striking down discriminatory voting practices in Shelby County v. Holder, 2012. What is judicial restraints? Philosophy that the courts should allow the states and other two branches of the federal government to solve social, economic, and political problems. Federal courts should act only in those situations where there are clear constitutional questions. Courts should merely interpret the law rather than make the law. Suggests that courts should merely follow the original intent of the founders. Examples of judicial restraints include the following court cases. Upheld the law in Missouri that allowed slavery to exist in Dred Scott v. Sanford, 1857. Upheld restrictions on abortion as long as they did not place an undue burden on a woman. In Planned Parenthood v. Casey, 1992. Ruled that the Second Amendment guarantees an individual the right to own a firearm even if they are not part of a well-regulated militia. In the District of Columbia v. Heller, 2008. What are the historical developments with judicial philosophy? Prior to 1937, liberals complained about the conservative court being too activist when it struck down various reform-minded laws in Schechter Poultry Corporation versus the United States in 1935. FDR responded with his court packing attempt in 1938 and failed, but the court in its famous switch in time that saved nine began to accept New Deal legislation. Now it was the conservatives who began to complain about the liberal court being too activist, especially with the advent of the Warren Court 1954 to 1969. Conservatives began to complain about the court's judicial activism in Rights of the Accused in Miranda v. Arizona, 1966, Civil Rights in Brown v. Board of Education, 1954, and Civil Liberties in Engel v. Vitale, 1962. The Burger Courts, 
1969 to 1986 was less activist than the Warren Court, but still upset conservatives with decisions such as Roe v. Wade and UC Regents v. Bach. The Rehnquist Court, 1986 to 2005, was accused by liberals of being too activist because it overturned liberal precedents, such as overturning Gun-Free School Zones Act, United States v. Lopez, 1995, overturning the line item veto, Clinton v. New York, 1998, overturning Florida Supreme Court decisions in the election of the year 2000, Bush v. Gore, overturning California's Proposition 215 that legalized medical use of marijuana and Reich v. Gonzalez in 2005. Time will tell what the Roberts Court will be remembered for. What are some restraints on judicial power? Courts can make decisions but cannot enforce them. The Constitution creates a separation of powers between the three branches of government which can check and balance each other. Courts cannot reach out and take cases, but must wait for the cases to come to them. Presidential appointment of judges. Congress and restraints on judicial power. The Senate confirmation of judges. Impeachment and removal. Increasing the number of courts and judges, and thus the type of judges to Congresses and the President's liking. Passing constitutional amendments. Repassing a law that was unconstitutional in hopes that the Supreme Court will change its mind. Determining the jurisdiction of the courts, meaning what kinds of cases the courts can and cannot have, and already existing laws. Stare decisis, Latin for to stand by things decided, the notion that prior court decisions must be recognized as precedents. Civil law systems believe stare decisis interferes with judges' ability to interpret the law and legislatures' ability to make the law. Public opinion. Supreme Court probably does not follow the election returns in the short run because the justices were appointed by previous presidents for life terms. In the long run, however, the court will probably reflect on public opinion because the justices are appointed by presidents who were elected by the people.